that was a classic just now, man. Um, down there in Memphis, man. That game's probably going to be rebroadcast on NBA TV sometime this week. Uh, that was one of the better playoff games I've seen uh, in my 27 years of watching uh, reg- on a regular basis the NBA. Um, we got a series now, man. We got a series. Uh, final score in overtime, 110-108. Memphis prevails off of Mark Gasol, a jumper with, uh, I think he received an entry pass near the elbow. I think he made the shot with just seven-tenths of a second remaining. I don't think San Antonio had any timeouts left. So essentially the game was pretty much over. Uh, they only could just heave something from the other side of the court and then came nowhere near it going in. And the series is tied 2-2. Um, Memphis came out hard. Memphis came out swinging for for the you know swinging against San Antonio. Um, they probably would have won in a near route had they not committed twenty three turnovers in this ball game. Uh, San Antonio really capitalized off of those turnovers. Uh, in particular. Uh, Ka- Kawhi Leonard had six steals, and I'll talk about him in a moment. I got a lot to say about that guy. Um, like I said, Kawhi Leonard had six steals, and uh, the San Antonio Spurs really committed, uh, scored a lot of points. I think if I saw the stat correctly, they scored 31 points off of those 23 turnovers. So, like, Memphis nearly shot themselves in the foot this game. But Memphis, Memphis came to play today, man. A lot of people forget that Memphis – beat the San Antonio Spurs in a playoff series back in 2011, and then Memphis made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals just four years ago when they played the Spurs. Now, ultimately, they lost to the Spurs, but they made it to the Western Conference Finals. So this is a team that has had some success against uh, opponents in the West and against the Spurs. Um, So this isn't a normal, in my opinion, seven against seven seed was usually uh, I was talking to someone earlier usually in the first the, the matches between one and eight and two and seven usually at least at least when I was uh, growing up and up until early adulthood usually those two series were the most lopsided then when you got to three and six and four or five it was much more much more competitive uh, but this series looked like it could possibly be competitive um Marcus Hall was five or twelve from the field. Uh, didn't have a like a you know he didn't have a marquee game, but he had a good game. Uh, Sixteen points, big on the boards with twelve rebounds, four assists. You know I didn't really watch Memphis too much this too much in the regular season, right? And it kind of shocked me seeing Marcus Hall back there firing for threes, man. I've seen him shoot threes before, but I had no idea that he all of a sudden has become like a, a damn marksman from three. He made, said that he made 104 three-pointers this regular season and shot him at a 39% clip. And a 39% clip, that's about the career mark of a Reggie Miller. And that's actually better than the career mark of Larry Bird. I'm not saying he's as good a shooter as Larry Bird. And I think Larry Bird's three-point percentage is a little bit misleading because for four years – he didn't really try to attempt that shot. He, he shot a lot of them in his first year in comparison to the league average. But he didn't really start taking that shot again until the 85-86 season. Uh, and when he did used to shoot that shot, usually it was with um, defenders all over him or he was firing something up uh, when the shot clock was, was running down. Usually that type of situation. Uh, I think if you take away those four years, Bird is a 40% career three-point shooter. That's a whole nother discussion. Uh, Michael Conley, a guy who I've ribbed a little bit for his salary, $153 million over five years, $31.5 million a year. Um, the highest paid player in the NBA. Tonight he was, he really did earn that money, okay? Michael Conley was the second best player on the court tonight. Okay, and that's no 
slouching because the other guy that was better was Kawhi Leonard. And uh, and yet, Jesse, I finally mastered his name. I will no longer say Kawhi. But Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi. Kawhi. Michael learned to pronounce his name correctly. But um, Michael Conley, played, he scored a franchise record 35 points. Nine rebounds, eight assists. I mean, he just was clutch, clutch in this game for the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, Zach Randolph was effective as well with 12 points, 11 rebounds, one assist. And this lineup that they have now with Randolph and Ennis. Oh, by the way, um, Conley, 35 just eclipsed the former franchise record for points for the Grizzlies held by his teammate Zach Randolph who scored 34 points in the postseason twice for the Grizzlies. Just wanted to mention that. And um, Jeff Green scored 14 points for the Grizzlies. Vince Carter made three three three-pointers today for the Memphis Grizzlies. And with those three three three-pointers he became the first player over 40 years of age to make three three pointers in a game in the playoffs. I mean, just one of those. Ah, that's one of those um, late great Stuart Scott type, you know, stats that don't really mean anything, but it's just kind of interesting little trivia. Um, for the Spurs, they got nothing from Manu Ginobili. I think he was all five. They got nothing, but for the third game, for the third time in four games, Tony Parker was big for the Spurs. Without Tony Parker, the Spurs would have been dead in the water. 22 points, four rebounds, five assists. He's been a rejuvenated player. Um, you know, this is, he's playing similar. Not as dominant, not quite as fast. He's not quite the guy he used to be. But it's, this is something resembling the Tony Parker that we used to see five, six, seven, eight years ago. Same guy I saw score 55 points in the game before. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, nah, okay game. But the guy that really, really was big for San Antonio was Kawhi Leonard. All right. 14 or 30 shooting from the floor. Uh, But earlier, he wasn't hitting his shot. So that 14 or 30 can be, uh, it's not, it was just not that bad anyway, but that's 14 or 30 shooting. Uh, it's, it's okay. But he scored a playoff career high. I mean, he keeps getting playoff career highs again and again against Memphis. Uh, but he scored a playoff career high, 43 points, grabbed eight rebounds, dished out three assists, grabbed six steals. Uh, well, swiped six steals, I really should say. And made a playoff career high seven three-pointers. He took over in the fourth quarter, scoring 16 points in the fourth quarter. And um, I believe he scored something like, including overtime, might be a little off here, but 22 of the 43 points in the fourth in overtime. And he just, that fadeaway that he made uh, going toward the end of the game uh, in regulation, it looked like it would have been a shot to seal the game. But uh, Michael Conley was, uh, he's got a friend of mine coming right now, cut his view a little bit short. Michael Conley was big, uh, tying the game back up. But it was a tremendous game, man. But tell me what you guys think. Oh, by the way, I'm going to call this guy back. I'm going to say this toward the end of this video. Kawhi Leonard, in my opinion, is right there. He's right there on the verge. I put this in a tweet to Jesse Gladsaget. He agreed with me. He's a San Antonio Spurs fan. Kawhi Leonard, in my opinion, is right on the precipice of overtaking LeBron James as the best player in the NBA. Now, those of you who have who lack listening skills, I'm not saying historically he's greater than LeBron James. What I mean right now the 32-year-old version of LeBron James. Next year, he'll be 32 going on 33-year-old version. 
I think that Kawhi Leonard will overtake LeBron as the game's best player. Now, that's not going to be an opinion totally shared by everybody, but I think you'll gradually begin to see that because, like, the, like they were saying, uh, Doris Burke, this is a guy, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard, that wants to be the best player in the league. He wants to be truly great. He wants to be up there with the LeBrons and the Kobe's and the Michaels. Okay? I've seen this guy totally work on his game. You know, the way he was able to uh, elude defenders and shoot that fadeaway, he couldn't do something. He couldn't do half the stuff he, he does now three years ago. He's totally added to his game. He's added the range. You know, his, his touch is so much better as far as shooting the basketball. And I think in a couple of years, I remember back in 2007, 2008, a lot of people were saying, you know, LeBron has finally passed Kobe as the best player. And some people didn't agree with it. But eventually, the majority of people believed that, you know, they agreed with that, like around 2012 or so. Most people finally conceded that. But I think that Kawhi Leonard is primed to become the game's best player. And I think there's going to be a couple of MVP awards and his trophy before all everything, all is said and done with this guy. He is absolutely phenomenal. He's a stud, and he plays on both ends of the court. And um, boy, I know people are just sick ad nauseum of the MVP race, but in my opinion, it's three guys. LeBron, he's having an okay series. He's having a great season. But Cleveland didn't have necessarily a great season team-wise. There's three guys in the conversation, in my opinion, leading guys for MVP, and that's Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Kawhi Leonard. And Kawhi Leonard, supposedly people have already voted for the MVP and it's just going to be announced June 26th. But, man, Kawhi Leonard is going to be something special. But tell me what you guys think.